terror group ISIS has made a video game to try and recruit young kids into ISIS. They can now reach directly into the homes of really young kids. Shooting attacks on two mosques in the New Zealand city of Christchurch, 49 people are known to have died. The UNESCO Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Education for Peace and Sustainable Development, the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations, and the United Nations Office of Counterterrorism join forces to launch the Digital Games for Peace Challenge. Let me welcome everybody to the Digital Games for Peace. Why peace? Well, that's that's a no-brainer. But digital games, why digital games? About 2.2 billion youth between ages of 18 to 35 in the, in the world right now. And we have 2.5 billion active video gamers. We are witnessing a significant time in history in which young people are increasingly rising up to the challenge of creating a better world for all. Games are not always used for positive goals. Gamification of violent extremism has been and still is on the rise. We have seen terrorists and violent extremists understand this potential. We have seen them infiltrate, modify, misuse and create video games to spread violent extremist narratives, radicalize, incite and interact with potential recruits or to plan their next attack. As a response, we must use the digital world to propose counter-narratives, instilling positive values as empathy and solidarity. Especially video games, we just have a monitor in front of us, but we're just imagining everything that's taking place inside the game and making decisions and, and, and coming up with goals and, and thinking about what we're going to be doing. So we are very much living a moment where games are relevant because they are interactive, they are participatory, that can allow us to better understand other cultures, other perspectives and other walks of life. Intercultural dialogue is a viable tool for bridging and cultural and ethnic divides that contributes to instilling a culture of peace. All these competencies have shown a significant promise in cultivating peace in our society. We know that building SEL skills in children and youth helps in promoting peaceful and tolerant societies. We were unsure at first of how many gamers and tech savvy young people with interest in combating violent extremism uh, can we find for this challenge, but we were very pleased. We were rather thrilled to receive hundreds and hundreds of applications, proving that young people stand ready to work alongside the decision makers to change the narrative and their future. We received terrific applications. It was quite the challenge for the jurors to find the top 57 who would be spending the next eight weeks in comprehensive workshops with experts from various fields. These were participatory virtual sessions on game design, PVE, SEL, ICD, UX and psychology. Okay, the magic is about to happen. What I'm going to teach you in the next two minutes will allow you to create a masterpiece. Now, in impact areas, behavior change is kind of like the holy grail. Can you actually create an experience that will help people change their behavior on a long-term basis? A perception is subjective. Perception is a construction of the mind. It's gonna depend on our culture, past experience, so start by identifying what's meaningful for your players and to always think about the ethics. Games can also transform your player. So when you're making your game, I would like you to think about how should your players be different after playing your game? So the world is, uh, is systems, right? And when we talk about designing games, we can think about systems. The systems we're in uh, can lead to people becoming less tolerant of one another. This is incredibly exciting. And hopefully through these services, we're able to have a real impact on these people's lives and their involvement in violent extremist groups. 
So simple, so beautiful, so elegant. Following this first bootcamp phase, the 57 game changers had their first challenge. Each one had to apply the skills they acquired over the past several weeks and produce a thorough analysis of an existing game. They were then required to reinvent its mechanics, narrative or intended context to transform it into a game that promotes peace, SEL or ICD. For the Remix Challenge, it was interesting to present an alternative use of an existing video game. As per the requirement of the challenge, everyone actually had to elaborate on how we can use the game as a learning game. Uh, my Remix Challenge was uh, based on the game Pokemon Go, where I added an element of care, where the premise of the game was not just going around catching Pokemons, but interacting with them and asking them if they, if they approve you as well. We identified the most innovative 22 of these submissions and these game changers went on further to conceptualize and develop ideas for four games complete with educators guides to prevent violent extremism. The basic idea of Group 2's game, all here, is to raise social awareness on pertinent issues that our world is currently facing. To practice key life skills and competencies, primarily self-awareness, social awareness, and responsible decision-making. After each game session, we will be giving the player a list of local, national, and international organizations and NGOs that help with a certain issue presented in the game. We are all here, and we implore you to join us on this mission to change the world one tap at a time. The idea of our game diversity is that it's a two-player game where these two players who have no idea about the other person get together interact, solve mini puzzles, answer questions, which sometimes involve coming to a consensus. I would like to highlight the common social and emotional learning competencies that diversity will offer. Our levels are simple but effective tools that are backed with cell competencies to kindle intercultural dialogue among the players. The game can also be used as a tool for building global citizenship and interpersonal skills. Reverse is a time travel based adventure game telling a story of young Alice, a girl with physical disability coming from a historically marginalized community. Where player's main task is to build a peace squad fighting for liberty, equality and fraternity. Player has got four options to mobilize the in-game characters and make them join his or her peace squad. Slate is a choice-based narrative adventure set in the fictional city of Riri, with the backdrop of civic unrest, terrorism and social apathy covering the perspectives of three important PVE stakeholders. The resistance member, policy maker, the educator. Our game tries to compel the player to understand and to peek into the minds of each of these characters which are involved in violent extremism. They allow players to shape the experience of the game, not just be a passive observer in them. We hope to build it as an open source resource for PVE trainers and stakeholders, which they can modify, bring their own local context to include it in their training programs for powerful stakeholders. I have learned a lot from the mentors and the game changers. To say that I learned new things would be an understatement. I had epiphanies along the way. And that really opened my eyes to what games can be and how powerful they are. I'd like to acknowledge the incredible work that's been done uh, by the young people who just presented to you. 
just uh, just blew me away. Absolutely blew me away. Really enjoyed the imagination, the creativity, and the energy. Uh, making a game is not an easy thing to do. It involves stories and mechanics, and and with clear objectives in mind, as in this project, it becomes even more challenging. And these young people have worked together virtually. Many of them have never actually met each other before. Uh, they come from diverse backgrounds, and somehow they they brought all of their their skills and experiences together to develop these these phenomenal games. Um, just wanting to wish all of you the very best as you go out and change the world. And it's needed. Your work is needed now more than ever. We must learn to live together. It's not an option. We must learn to live together as brothers, as family.